Teachers in Object-Oriented Programming. It's my first session, so please go easy on me. If I start laughing nervously, please just laugh with me. It'll make things a lot easier. Um, so we'll get started. Um, my name is Fatima, or Fatima, however you want to pronounce it. My Drupal.org username is Sugar Overflow. Um, and I work for Digital Echidna. I've been there for like five months now, and it's really fun. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start our adventure. Today we're going to go on a Pokemon adventure. We're going to catch some Pokemon, become Pokemon masters, do some gym battles, all the fun stuff. Um, and as we do that, we're going to learn some object-oriented programming. So we're going to try to understand what it really is. And basically, in like a summary definition, it's another way to organize your code so that you can reuse your code without having to repeat things over and over. So like, for example, if you have five different Pokemon, you would create a Pokemon instead of having to, you know, describe your Pokemon in every file. So basic definition. Um, so when you start your Pokemon journey, I'm sure almost everyone should be familiar with this. You go to Professor Oak and you pick a starter Pokemon. And because Pikachu is awesome, we're just going to start with Pikachu. Um, and now that we're starting our journey, uh, we have our starter Pokemon. We're going to think a little bit about how we can model this in terms of like ideas. Um, so we'll start with like, what do we really know about our Pikachu? And just to keep it simple, we'll stick to like, we know the name of our Pokemon is Pikachu. We know the type is electric and we know that it can attack. And this kind of makes, gives us an idea of like what a Pokemon can be. Um, potentially there would be more things that you could add to this list, but just to keep it simple, did I say that already? Um, so OOP lets us do this in a really fun way called a class. And a class is kind of like a blueprint. Classes usually have two things, properties and methods. You can think of properties like data points. A property for like a human being would be like a name or an age. It's kind of like a descriptor value. And you can think of methods as like class specific functions or things that that class can do or act on or react to. Um, and if we put this into our Pokemon class, can everybody see that? It seems kind of small. Um, so we have our class Pokemon, and when we want to create a class, we use the class keyword. Um, and then we have the public property name and the public property type. And we have a constructor function. And this is a nifty little thing in PHP that allows you to, when you create your object, when you want to create a Pokemon, you can pass in your name and type. So you can create a specific type of Pokemon. Um, and then we have the attack function, which basically doesn't really do anything yet, but you can imagine that it returns your special attack. Um, so now we'll look at creating a Pokemon. So when we create a, when we create something of a class, we call it an object. Um, and so here we're creating a Pikachu object, and we're giving it a name, which is Pikachu, and a type, which is electric. And then the second line is just an example of how you would call a method in a class. You'd basically just do the name of the object you just created, and the little arrow thingy, and attack. <laughs> Um, so we're going to go back to our journey, and we're traveling through the woods, and we come across a Pokemon, and suddenly it, it's a wild Pokemon, and it's an Oddish. Um, and so basically, you know, we want to collect more Pokemon, and we want to become a Pokemon master. So we battle this Oddish, and we capture it, and then we go to dinner with our Pokemon, and we think about, you know, now I have a Pikachu and an Oddish, and later on I got a Poliwhirl. Um, these Pokemon are really different. They have different types of attack. One of them's electric, one of them's a water Pokemon. Um, how can I change my Pokemon class so that I can account for these differences in the different Pokemon? Um, just to sort of model what we're thinking about, we have Pikachu, that's electric, Oddish, which is a grass type, and Poliwhirl, which is a water type. <clears throat> so instead of just repeat, uh, we're thinking about a way to repeat the similarities from our Pokemon class, but also have the ability to create specific classes like electric Pokemon or water Pokemon to give them the specialties that they have as different types. Um, and there's an OOP concept that makes this really easy for us. It's called inheritance. And inheritance is all about sharing. So you have a parent class that has some attributes and some methods, and then you have child classes that basically absorb these parent classes and then can build upon them some more. So in our Pokemon example, we can basically take the Pokemon class into an, like a specific class, like an electric Pokemon, and then we can give them more attributes or more methods that maybe a generic Pokemon wouldn't have, but a specific electric Pokemon would have. Um, so here we're just looking at some code. We have a class Pokemon, and I just like took out some stuff to make it a little simpler. We're just looking at the attack function. Um, and then we have class electric Pokemon, which uses the keyword extends, which tells you that it's inheriting from the Pokemon class. And it's overriding the attack function by using like some special electric attack. And then we have another class, class Pikachu, with extends electric Pokemon. And you can see that that one's overriding the same parent function, but it has like a special Thunderbolt attack. 
Um, so now that we've got all the types sorted out, we're going back into our journey, and we've been traveling quite a bit and leveling up and battling, and now it's time to go to the big leagues, and we get a gym battle challenge. <laughs> Um, and so what happened here is that we started battling, we throw Pikachu in there, and we were really confident, but we lost our battle. And that's because we really need to learn about strategic battling. We can't just throw Pikachu into every battle. It might not necessarily be the best choice, even though we're confident about it. And we learned some lessons from battling Giovanni, because it looks like he was using the types to his advantage. So why don't we map what we've learned? So we learned by battling Giovanni that electric Pokemon have, uh, certain Pokemon have certain strengths against other types of Pokemon and weaknesses against other types of Pokemon. For the Pokemon lovers, I know that it's, it's a lot more than just this, but I tried to simplify it <laughs> just to make it easy. Um, so electric Pokemon has a strength against water and not really strength, but more like an advantage in battle. Um, and so grass has it against water, fire, water has it against fire. <laughs> um, and so... When we think about this and we want to sort of modify our classes to account for these strengths and weaknesses, we realize that if we just create a generic Pokemon class, it doesn't really have a strength or weakness because it doesn't really have a type. So we can't really have that base class there to be instantiated or to made, make an object of. So we're going to do away with that class and we're going to make it into an interface, which is an exciting PHP concept, which is like a contract. And what this interface will allow us to do is create create like a like a set of code that classes can implement, but you can't actually create you can't actually create an interface itself. So by putting Pokemon into an interface, by turning Pokemon class into an interface, we have a way of having the methods and the attributes that we want every Pokemon to have, but we don't necessarily want like a Pokemon with no type. Um, Interfaces are, uh, all methods in the interface have to be public and the classes have to implement the methods that are in the interface. So just like pseudocode kind of PHP, um, we have a Pokemon interface and we have some setters and getters um, to get the Pokemon name and the Pokemon type. Uh, and we have the public function attack that we looked at before, but we also have these new functions called get strength and get weakness. Um, and because it's an interface, we have to take these functions and implement them in the class that implements this interface. So for example, it would look something like class electric Pokemon implements Pokemon interface. Um, and then specifically, class Pikachu extends or inherits from the electric Pokemon class, which implements the Pokemon interface. So it has access to all of the above and has to implement it. So we'll look at that. Um, so when an electric Pokemon implements a Pokemon interface, it has certain strengths and weaknesses. And I kind of just threw them in there like water and grass. Um, and so that basically means now we have a Pokemon interface. We can't create generic Pokemon without a type. And we have the ability to put strengths and weaknesses into our specific Pokemon classes. And then we're going to go back on our adventure. And, you know, we've been traveling for quite a bit. We've made some friends along the way. We had, like, a hit up with Team Rocket, and we saved someone from Team Rocket. And they gave us a water stone as a present. And we have a Poliwhirl. So that means we can use this water stone to evolve our Poliwhirl. I couldn't really find a screenshot with a Poliwhirl in it. But just imagine that your Poliwhirl just evolved into a Poliwrap. That's awesome. But how do we add this ability to, like, our class hierarchy? How can we show that a Pokemon has the ability to evolve? Um, and so not all Pokemon can can evolve. There are certain factors. I know in the game, like you have to be at like a certain level for some Pokemon, and other Pokemon need a special stone or special food. So, how can we give them this ability without creating like an evolution class and then trying to inherit from that? Um, and PHP gives us this uh, functionality with traits. So traits are like reusable features, and they allow us to, you know, take like a snippet of code and reuse it in different places without having to worry about inheriting more because we're already inheriting. Uh, from a single class, and PHP only allows us to inherit once. Um, this is really similar to a class. It's kind of just like, I'm going to use this, and I get all this code, and I, I can use it in my new class. Um, but you can't create an object of a trait, if that makes sense. Um, you have to put use the trait in a class and then create an object of that class. <sighs> So our Poliwhirl, uh, which extends water Pokemon, uses the evolution trait. And when you want to use a trait, you use the use keyword and the name of the trait. Um, and that basically pulls in the trait, the code for the trait. Um, and then I kind of mocked up what the evolution trait might look at look like to start with. Um, so you'd have like an evolves to, so that you know what Pokemon it's going to move up to. Um, and then you'd have like an evolves uh, function to actually involve your Pokemon. <sighs> That's 
all I had for today. Um, we covered a really small amount of OOP, but I hope that the experience was exciting enough and like you took something away from it that was memorable. Um, yeah. Thank you. That's my Twitter and that's the joined feedback thing. It was my first presentation, so it'd be great to hear about how it was and if I definitely talk too fast. Um, looking at the time. <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, slides are kind of messy right now, but I'll put them up and I'll put a link on the thing later. You have 20 minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> I really bullet trained through that. Um, but. <laughs> Questions? <laughs> Questions as I hide? <laughs> Actually, the screen is in like a great position because you can like kind of block yourself out. Can I have a question? Yeah. So, what kind of what are the most you know uh, relevant concepts you think that Drupal eight developers could you know use from the concepts that you presented? I think inheritance is really important because um, we do a lot of extending when we're building new functionality. Um, uh, I know traits are pretty important. Scott told me that. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> By extension, they're important. Um, and uh, interfaces is a new thing. Like when you're creating like a plugin for something, and you have to extend the interface to get some of the functionality. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> if I can hijack that, if you are curious about some of the things, I'm doing OOP design patterns in Drupal 8 Part tomorrow two. at 10:30, so that can extend <laughs> the class. <laughs> Tomorrow, if you want to get a chance to see some more specific examples, and I promise you, my presentation doesn't just take ten minutes. I got to, <laughs> and it takes all forty-five minutes for me to get. Doesn't have Pokemon. I know nothing yeah. about Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> I know about this class that I couldn't possibly give you. Well, like yeah. if you guys are ready, you should go move on to the next level. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. What, what are some resources that you're fond of for people to continue learning OOP? Um, I guess when I first learned it, I did a lot of like homework style things because I learned it in school. So I would say like I know I don't know if Code Academy actually has like an OOP, but it might have an OOP refresher kind of thing where you can like actually write the code. What helps me is like doing these mini projects. Like you can sit down and be like, well, I'm I'm gonna work on a thing and I want to implement it. And I'm sure there'll be like little prompt projects. Because like until you write it, I think it, the theory the theory doesn't make as much sense unless you code it. Is it like it's just theory and it's just words? So um, I don't have any specific resources, but if you hit me up on Twitter, I can get back to you on that. The PHP the right way, I think. Oh, oh yeah, that's a great book. and it's funny. Book, it's OP, but like, they I think they definitely talk about OP yeah. some there. PHP the right way. Hi. Hi. Uh, <laughs> how do you uh, choose? Um, when it comes to like naming and namespacing things, how do you choose uh, uh, and all I, stuff, like classes? And so there's coding, there's like a page on Drupal.org with like the naming standards for Drupal 8 and then kind of just follow that. Okay. <laughs> well, like before your Pokemon, I guess. Uh, I uh, had like a DA core downloaded and I just kind of went and looked for like random classes and tried to follow, you know, how they had, you know, basically copy pasted out a block plugin, block plugin and just like replace it with Pokemon. That's literally how I did that. <laughs> yeah. If you can't read the docs, then you just look at the code and copy paste. Any other questions? Can you talk a little bit more about traits and like when or why you would use them versus just putting the stuff in the class themselves? So I, mm, I guess because if you have two or three different types of classes, like if you have electric Pokemon, water Pokemon, and like flying Pokemon, I imagine you would have a lot more. Um, putting the code in each class would be repeating the code. Um, you could potentially put it in the Pokemon class, but not all Pokemon can evolve in this particular example. So that's why I went for the trait. I don't know if that fully answers your question. Uh, maybe there's someone else that can answer it better. Yeah, I mean, go for it. I mean, I had it. So what you, PHP is single inheritance. You <laughs> need to extend a class. And so if you're going to put a particular method, let's say, a trait can be more than a method, but think in terms of method. If you're going to put a particular method inside of a class, then in order to inherit that method, you must inherit that class. And so like an example that you see with me tomorrow, I have this